Welcome to lesson 1-4, Solving Linear Systems, Part 1. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another concept you should remember from Algebra 1, solving systems of linear equations. So just to remind you that this is what happens when we have two lines, two lines on a plane, and we can have lines that intersect, lines that are parallel or the same line. And I've given you a picture of what each of those look like. Intersecting lines, of course, they cross. Parallel lines never intersect, and the same line, this is kind of like a line over top of itself. For intersecting lines, there is only one solution to this system, and it is that point right there where the two lines cross. That's a point of intersection, and there's only one solution. We call a system of equations of intersecting lines, we say that they are consistent and independent. And they intersect because the slopes are different. The y-intercept, well, we don't have enough information about the y-intercept. It could be the same, it could be different. It really depends on where the lines intersect. As for parallel lines, of course, parallel lines never cross. They never cross, and therefore, there is no solution uh, to the system of equations. We call two lines that are parallel, we say that they are inconsistent. And again, lines that are parallel have the same slope. And they have to have different y-intercepts, because if they, don't, if they have the same y-intercept and the same slope, then we're down here into this third situation. They are actually the same line. And the same line just intersects itself always. So it's like two lines on top of each other, as I said. There are an infinite number of solutions, because every single point where these two lines cross is a solution to this system of equations. We say that they are consistent and dependent, and again, they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So how do you solve a system of equations? There are two main methods. One is elimination, the other is substitution. I'm going to demonstrate both of these with this example problem. First, let's take a look at substitution. So substitution, and using the substitution method, we have to have one equation solved for a variable. So we'll see in this equation y equals and we know that y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So when I use substitution, what I'm going to do in the other equation is I will replace the y, which is right here, with negative 2x plus 5. So let's do that now. So let's see here, I have x minus, if it helps, maybe put a 1 there, that kind of helps sometimes so that we remember to distribute through the negative sign. And then y, we're going to replace y with the other equation, negative 2x plus 5. We've substituted that into our equation. And of course, we'll finish it out with equals 1. Now, what do I do? Now, I just solve this for x. I take this equation and I solve for x. So I'm going to distribute through my negative sign. Let's see here. That'll give me x, and that'll give me a plus 2x minus 5, and of course, equals 1. I will then combine my like terms, so I have 3x minus 5 equals 1, and now I will add my 5 to both sides, so plus 5 to both sides. See here, that'll give me 6 over here, so I have 3x equals 6, and finally I will divide both sides by 3, and I'll come up with x equals 2. Now remember, this is a system of equations, so that means we're looking for a point of intersection. What we've done is we've found the x value. We now have to find the y value. So I'm going to take this 2, and I'm going to plug it back into one of my equations. I like the top one, because it looks like it's going to be easy to figure out what y is equal to. So let's see here. I know y is equal to negative 2. I'll replace the x with the x value that I just found, which is 2 and then plus 5, and I'll simplify it down. So let's see here, that'll give me a negative 4 plus 5, which means the answer is 1. So y is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, so the point of intersection is 2, 1. And that's the answer to this system of equations. Let's go through this same problem, but this time, let's solve it using the elimination method. In order to use the elimination method, we need to get all of our variables on the same side. And they need to be in written in what's called standard form, which just means have the variables in alphabetical order. So this second equation is actually already in the form we want it to be. So, 
x minus y equals 1 is already good. That's already in a good uh, form. This first equation, I have to get this negative 2x to the other side. So how do I do that? Well, I add 2x to both sides. So add 2x to both sides, and then negative 2x and positive 2x, they cancel each other out. And my form of my equation will be 2x plus y equals 5. All right. So now, using elimination, remember, what we need to see is we need to see two variables that are going to cancel each other out. And if it's not in that form, then we simply multiply by a scalar to make them go away. If I look here, I have positive y and negative y. And when I add positive y and negative y together, I end up with zero. So there's no need to change the form of this particular equation. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two equations and I'm going to add them together. So let's see here. 2x plus x gives me 3x. And then as I said, positive y and negative y, they will cancel each other out. Equals 5 plus 1 is 6. And I can go ahead and divide both sides by 3. I'll end up with x equals 2. Which, if you remember, was the same x value we had on the previous uh, problem, which was the same problem, so it shouldn't surprise us that x is equal to 2. From here, my process is exactly the same. I'll take this x equals 2. I'll plug it back into one of my original problems. I'll go through the math, just like I did with the last problem, and I'll come up with y is equal to 1. And again, that's solution 2, comma, 1. Elimination is my favorite method to use. It might be a little bit more work up front, but it's going to be, I believe, easier in the long run, especially when you have scalars and you need to uh, multiply and eliminate when you have a scalar, when it doesn't work out nicely. Sometimes substitution can get a little messy, especially when you have to work with fractions. So we've come to that part in the video where you should pause the video and try these two problems. Try using elimination or substitution. It doesn't matter. Try which method you feel is best. I actually, looking at these problems, think substitution is best for one and elimination better for the other. So why don't you go ahead and give it a try with these two problems. I will work them out and show you the solutions here as soon as you unpause the video. So right now, pause it, try them out, see how, what you come up with. So here's example one. x equals 1 minus 3y and 2y minus x is equal to 4. This was the one that I saw that I thought substitution would work the best with. See how x is already solved for itself? And what I'll do is I'll replace x in the second equation with 1 minus 3y. So this x will get replaced with 1 minus 3y. Okay, so 2y minus, I like to put my 1 there, 1 minus 3y. Close the parentheses, equals 4. Okay, and now it's just the distributing the negative 1 through, and I get 2y minus 1 plus 3y equals 4. I'll combine my like terms, 2y and 3y, and get 5y minus 1 equals 4. I'll add 1 to both sides. That'll give me 5 on the left-hand side. 5y, I'm sorry, 5y on the left-hand side, 5 on the right side. I'll divide both sides by 5, and I'll come up with y equals 1. Now, I take this value for y, plug it back into one of my original equations. Again, I like that top one. x equals 1 minus 3 times 1, and I'll simplify. So let's see, that's x equals 1 minus 3, so x is equal to negative 2. So my solution is negative 2 comma 1. All right, let's look at number 2. Here we have x plus y equals 0 and 3x plus 2y equals 1. Okay, so if I was going to add these together, I would not get anything that would cancel out. Like x plus 3x is 4x, they didn't cancel. y plus 2y is 3y, that didn't cancel. So I'm going to have to multiply by a scalar. So if I look at this, I just have to choose which variable I want to eliminate. I think I'm going to eliminate y. So in this top equation, in order to be able to eliminate y, I need a negative 2y here. But there's not one. So how can I do that? Well, I can multiply the entire equation by negative 2. So that means the x gets multiplied by negative 2, which gives me negative 2x. 
the y gets multiplied by negative 2, which gives me negative 2y, equals, and the 0 gets multiplied by negative 2, which is 0. The bottom equation, I'm not changing at all. 3x plus 2y equals 1. And now you should see that the negative 2y and the positive 2y will cancel each other out. That's really nice. The first, negative 2x plus 3x, that just gives me positive x. My work was a lot easier here in this particular problem. I end up with x equals 1. That's my x value. Now we got to find the y value. How do I do that? I take and I plug back into one of the original equations. Which ones? It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the first one. x plus y equals 0. So I know x is equal to 1. So 1 plus y equals 0. And I'll subtract my 1 from both sides, I, and I will end up with y equals negative 1. So again, my solution here, now that I have it all together, is 1 comma negative 1, x comma y. I hope this video was helpful in reviewing a system of equations and how to solve it using elimination and substitution. We will certainly be practicing more of this in class tomorrow. Enjoy!